A lot of people are heading to the altar. Tis the season, dude and brides and all. And our next guest is going to talk to us about uh, how to get a prenup done. Make sure you don't uh, lose out in the long run if it comes to that. <laughs> she is Jacqueline Newman. She is an NYC divorce lawyer. Um, and you can find her at nycdivorcelawyer.com. Always has great insight on the ins and outs of divorce, the laws around it. And she has some great books out, too, we're going to talk about. Jacqueline, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for having me. You bet. Uh, so why are prenups so important? Prenups are very important for various reasons. I mean, to begin with, if you want to have any kind of certainty um, in the event that you were to get divorced, it's a really good thing to write things down and kind of figure it out right now. If you have your own private business, that's something you want to consider. If you have assets from um, your family, if you're in a situation where people are coming from very, very different income levels, um, there's lots of reasons you'd want to do it just to kind of, you know, ensure as much security as you can in the event of a divorce. Jacqueline is managing partner at a top-tier Fifth Avenue Manhattan law firm for focused exclusively on divorce, so she knows of what she speaks. Jacqueline, what are some of the things we should do to prepare uh, for a prenup? Some of your tips. Well, it depends. So one of the things you want to make sure that you're on the same page with your soon-to-be spouse about it. That's probably the number one thing I would suggest. Um, if you're dealing in a situation where you know, you're coming from family money, and so that's a little bit easier a lot of times to have that conversation because a lot of times you can blame it on your parents and you can say that, you know, it's a family thing. Um, and if you're not in that situation and this is really just an income differential or you want to protect your own assets, it's probably a little trickier. But a lot of people understand. I mean, in New York, um, I can speak specifically in saying that, you know, prenups are really become very commonplace. So I think there's a lot less stigma than there used to be. And depending on state law, uh, the prenup or postnup um, can be different. Yes, that's true. So basically, a postnuptial agreement is what you would think. It means that you've signed it after you've gotten married, prenup just before. Uh, the difference really comes in the fact of what's called a fiduciary duty. So before you're married, you don't have as much of a fiduciary duty to your soon-to-be spouse as you would to your spouse. So what I say a lot is if you can get the prenup done, it's much better, just to keep makes it a stronger document. Not to say that all is lost if ultimately you don't sign it before walking down the, al down the altar. But at the end of the day, it's better to do a prenup than a postnup. Yeah. And I know you, we're talking specifically today about what to do if you have a family inheritance, something you want to protect. Or again, as you say, your family um, indicates they would like you to protect. Um, and you say one of the things we should do is keep very good documentation. Yes, absolutely. So what happens is if you receive, let's say you receive an inheritance from a family member, um, you don't want to take that money, you don't want to put it into a joint bank account, for an example, or you don't want to put it into a joint apartment. You really want to try as best as you can to keep things very separate. If you are going to blend it, so for an example, buying an apartment, then you want to be very clear to keep a clear paper trail. You want to show that the money, the inheritance went into a separate account, then you want to show the exact bank, tr bank transfer that went into the purchase of the apartment. So ultimately, upon a divorce, you want to do what's called a separate property tracing to be able to kind of pull back whatever it is you put that you put in. So save documentation, maintain separate accounts, um, don't commingle the inherited money or other assets. Um, and where should they put the money? Ultimately, you want to open your own account. You want to open an account in your own name, kind of put that to the side. You also don't want to actively manage it. Um, if you're in the financial in industry or just happen to like to stock, trade stocks, you want to be very careful not to do that to your separate property. Because the way that that works is if the account appreciates, so let's say it's worth a million dollars um, you know, at one point and then you actively trade it, you do a good job and now it's worth 1.5, that $500,000 of appreciation would be considered marital. So I always say to people, you're better off just giving it to a financial money manager, let them take care of it, and you can sit back and just make sure that all your money stays safe. And you offer, you're a one-stop shop, you have people you can recommend for such things, right? Because when people, well, People who've divorced a lot, they may be fine, but some people, it's a whole new ball game, and you can really be a good person to direct them and help them through a really tough situation. I like to think so, yeah. My office does exclusively matrimonial, so we do prenuptial agreements, we do divorces, we do any kind of family-related matter, child custody, um, child support, spousal support, equal distribution. We do the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. So if you're going through something like that, then yes, we're definitely a place that can help. And, and one other tip you have, keep titles in one name. So again, that goes back to if you're in a situation where you receive an inheritance, you don't want to be putting that into an account that's jointly held because you don't want it to seem as if you're gifting to your spouse the, that money.
So um, I know you have a couple books. You've been doing. How long have you been doing this? Oh, long time. Um, it's been uh, almost twenty years. Yeah, um, and you've got a couple books under your belt. You have one written for the men and one written for the women. Um, what are these books? What are some of your best tips for maybe staying married? And what are your best tips to getting out of a divorce with um, as few scars as possible? Well, definitely my biggest tip for staying married is the art of communication and the art of fighting well. You know, I always say people can get along. You know, when everyone's getting along, everything's great. It's really a question of how can you handle it when you fight? You know, I joke with people when they're getting married, I say you should always do an international trip with your soon-to-be spouse before that, because that's really when people are going to get into it, and you want to make sure that you can end up laughing instead of crying at the end. So communication is very important, um, and being open and being able to kind of talk about what's going on and not bottling everything inside. So that's really, I think, the art of staying married. And then how do you get out of it? You know, again, it's almost the same sort of rules. I mean, it's a question of respect. It's a question of, you know, people say they want to go for the jugular and they want to fight and all that. And, you know, you can do that, but, you know, what I say to my clients when they say they want to do it, I say, do you want to pay for your kid's college or mine? Because at the end of the day, it's very, very expensive. It's emotionally exhausting. It's financially exhausting. And at the end of the day, you know, it's just not worth it. I mean, you really want to be in a situation where you are being smart about the way to getting divorced and you're respectful. Yeah. Do you give tips to couples? Do you have people come in that you say, you guys seem like you get along, you communicate well, are you sure you want to do this? I don't do it with couples because generally you can't represent two people at once. So usually, but I will have clients come in and one of the first questions I ask them is, are you sure you want to get divorced? And if they pause for just even a millisecond, I usually say you should be in marriage counseling. Like you need to make sure that this is what you want to do. Again, for the same reasons that it's emotionally expensive, it's financially expensive, and it's very, very hard to turn back. So you just need to make sure you've done everything you can. And if you really have, and you feel like this is just not something that you want to, a relationship you want to continue in, then I think that we can help you get, get out of it. We're talking to Jacqueline Newman, NYCDivorceLawyer.com, out of NYC, of course. And we can go to your website right now and get your books, right? Absolutely. Amazon and also in BarnesandNoble.com. Okay, and there you are. You've been on any network you can name practically. And Jacqueline, we're going to hold you over because I know you have a list of some of the worst, craziest Hollywood divorces, celebrity divorces that we've had the pleasure or displeasure of witnessing. And uh, you're going to talk about that after the break and talk about possibly what went wrong, right? Absolutely. Okay, Jacqueline, we'll see you back after this. We're on America Trends, and we're right back. John and Richard, you are a living testament to the power of prayer. Your story reminds us that prayer changes hearts and transforms lives. It uplifts the soul, inspires action, and unites us all as one nation under God so important. And we say it here, you know? A lot of people, they don't say it. But you know what? They're starting to say it more, just like we're starting to say Merry Christmas when that day comes around. You notice the big difference between now and two or three years ago? It was, Paula, it was going in the other direction rapidly, right? Now it's straight up. Our country was found. Tired of never having enough light to put on your makeup just right? Uh. Sick of not being able to see up close? Uh. When you need to the most, then you need my fold-away mirror. The lighted double-sided vanity mirror with 10 times magnification. My fold-away mirror features super bright LEDs on both mirror sides for picture-perfect illumination. Plus, it's full-frame distortion-free so you can see your face naturally. Then rotates to a powerful 10 time magnification on the other side. Now, close-up work is easier than ever. From applying makeup and trimming your eyebrows to putting on mascara and doing up-close inspections. And you'll love this. It takes up virtually no space on your countertop, making getting ready clutter-free and easy. Extending to a full 13 inches high, my fold-away mirror comes to you so you don't have to lean into. It's so lightweight and compact that it saves space any place. Plus, my fold-away mirror has a built-in organizer, so accessories are always within reach. My fold-away mirror turns any 
room into your own private beauty bar. With 10 times the magnification and full frame distortion free, my fold away mirror makes everything crystal clear and easy to see. It folds down so compact, it's perfect for travel, going out after work, and getting ready on the go. My fold away mirror is like